Howdy, and welcome to Tessera's Nerf Room. This is the Dart Zone Max Striker. I mean, but Tess, the Max Striker 2.0 is out now. Why are you reviewing this one? It's completely irrelevant now. You're just using it as an excuse to complain, bleh. Well, actually, I bought this blaster with my hard-earned money just a few weeks ago, right before the Striker 2.0 came out, because Dart Zone was desperately trying to push these things through stores as fast as possible before the 2.0 came out, which means not only is it still completely relevant, but I have an excuse to yell about it. So with all that said, cue the intro. Striker is a 2021 release out of Dart Zone in the Max series, making it the first blaster to release out of that series because, oh boy, they had a lot of competition. They just had to get this thing to target as fast as possible because it wasn't like everybody was already saying, just go buy a Nexus Pro. And all this thing did was give everybody an excuse to say, just go buy a Max Striker. So is this right here at the just go buy a product that everybody actually wanted and needed? Let's find out starting with the design. When I first saw the Striker's design, I figured it was just a carbon copy of the Nexus Pro, but it actually does have quite a lot of interesting detail here. I like this design a lot more than the Nexus Pro's design. It is a lot more kind of aerodynamic and a lot more snipery than the Nexus Pro was. It looks like a form of sniper shotgun thing, which is a pretty cool combination of styles, and I think that they did it pretty good on this blaster. The stock blends in with the blaster's design, same with the grip, same with the foregrip. All of the gray and orange details blend very nicely with the large red shell, which is just made up of a singular piece and doesn't have any extra pieces clipped on other than the max logo right here which is on the inside and doesn't affect the shell quality in any way the shell quality isn't very good which we'll get into later but i digress it is still a pretty good looking design what about the ergonomics this blaster features a main grip a foregrip a stock and a cheek rest the stock is removable and adjustable though it comes with the blaster so i'm counting it as a built-in stock but let's talk about the main grip first it is a very comfortable very nicely ergonomically designed main grip it's got nice finger choils right here that are just pleasant to put your hand on. Back here, there's a nice dovetail. It's very rounded and smooth all the way around, and there's this nice texturing over it that just makes it a little bit more pleasant to hold on to, as well as the fact that despite it being a separate piece of plastic, it is anchored to the blaster shell very firmly and doesn't have that awkward wiggle like what happened with the Nexus Pro. As for the foregrip up here, I originally didn't like the fact that this was a horizontal pump grip rather than a vertical pump grip, but it actually works very nicely for this blaster. It's plenty big enough for you to get all four of your fingers on, and and because there's so much surface area around the side and the front of the pump grip, you can put your thumb there even if you have an oversized thumb. Just watch out for a that right there. That could get in the way. As for the stock, I really like this stock a lot. Not only is it very flat and contoured in the back, but it also has a raised cheek rest and it is very, very comfortable to brace against your shoulder. One of the best stocks that Dart Zone has ever come out with for one of these blasters. And they did something pretty cool. As you can see, the scope here is perfectly aligned with this raised stock. So when you have the raised stock, you can easily look through the scope. However, if you were to replace this stock with a much shorter one that doesn't have the cheek, the cheek riser, your cheek would be way too low to look through the scope properly. So they give you these iron sights so you're able to remove the scope and look through the iron sights instead. So it works if you have a cheek riser and it works if you don't. So how does this blaster work? Well, it is a magazine-fed pump-action springer. So you can pull this thing back, you can remove whatever magazine you have in it, it is compatible with full lengths, you put your bag in, you pull the thing forward, you fire once, it does not have slam fire. Let's talk about the magazines and the smoothness of operation as well as the triggers. First, starting with the prime. Zero out of 10, this thing is completely useless. Don't even bother, just, just leave the review right now. I'm joking, of course. This does recycle the stupid dead zone that I really did not like with the Nexus Pro or the Aeon Pro. However, it isn't as bad on this blaster as the other ones. Still, there's no excuse for there to be a dead zone here. People gave this excuse the fact that, oh, it's compatible with full length. This one's compatible with full length, and that doesn't have a dead zone, so I don't know what to tell you guys. But all things considered, the Prime is actually relatively smooth, considering that there is a dead zone there, and it's not quite as ridiculous and noticeable as it is on some other blasters that feature the same dead zone, and pushing it forward is very, very smooth and crispy. As for the trigger pull, it's got quite a bit of pull, 
but then it's actually pretty snappy. Though I would argue that the trigger isn't as good as some other blasters similar to this, it's not the worst trigger I've ever felt. A quick observation is the fact that this is compatible with a scar muzzle, so you can easily put a scar muzzle there and the barrel that this blaster comes with just friction fits in and is purely cosmetic. Now let's go over the magazines. This blaster includes a mag adapter, a short dart mag, and a full length mag. Let's go over the full length mag first. This is without a doubt one of the cheapest full length mags I've ever seen. Within just a few weeks of using it, not even that much, the mag retention is already starting to die, to the point where this mag will jam up often just from having it partially loaded. Even putting like two or three darts in is enough. Look at this it doesn't line up anymore. It just doesn't have enough strength to push it to the top, which is evidence of Dart Zone using a cheap spring in this magazine. And as such, please don't use the mag that comes with the blaster. As for the short dart mag here, it is noticeably better and has a much stronger mag spring, but even then, it still just doesn't feel very good. The magazine plastic quality is very cheap and can just squish in with barely any pressure whatsoever. Compare this to a Talon mag, which I know the comparison is kind of unfair, but they are included these mags with the blaster, a Talon mag is extremely rigid and doesn't have any form of flex like this. So having this much flex on the magazine just sucks. Plus the texturing on the side makes it very rough to put into blasters. So it's just not a pleasant magazine to use whatsoever. As for the mag adapter here, there's not much to write home about. It is a functional mag adapter that is made with honestly pretty thick plastic. There's not any squeeze on this like there is with the magazines individually, though it is still a dart zone mag adapter. So it is pretty crunchy to put mags into this and using the mag release itself is a really difficult thing to press in. The mag release spring on here is way too strong in my opinion. I feel like there is no reason for it to be this strong, but it is something that works if you don't have anything else. I just recommend please investing in a worker one. With that said, the mag release built onto the blaster is actually very nice. It is a paddle style that is very easily accessible to your middle finger and it mag drops without any effort. It isn't just the mag well thing here that mag drops. It mag drops with basically any magazine that you put into it. And a pleasant surprise here that wasn't seen on the Nexus Pro is the compatibility with 18 round stick mags from Nerf, which is a very pleasant surprise. All in all, I think the mag release here is really good. The mag release on this thing just sucks. Now, before we see a fire, I want to address the plastic quality and the build quality of this blaster, because I think it's very important on something like this that you're going to be buying from the store and taking to your local game without modifying it at all for most people. This blaster seems to be made very well. The plastic it seems very rigid and thick. However, that's hiding the dark secrets going on inside of the blaster. A lot of reviews that I have seen on this blaster and a lot of friends that I know that have this blaster have complained about internal parts randomly snapping mid usage. Particularly the priming rod here, as well as parts of the plunger tube just shattering while using the blaster and rendering it completely unusable. Another issue is the catch. The catch likes to break as well. And in one particular case, the rear end of this actually snapped off and caused the stock to go flying backwards super aggressively. And it actually injured one of my friend's shoulders due to how hard the spring came out and hit him in the shoulder. It was quite a traumatic thing to watch, but it did happen. Happen. And so there's a lot of things that you have to watch out for with this blaster. Now let's see it fire. So what mod potential does the striker have? Well, quite a bit, since it is a basic Springer setup similar to what we saw with the Dart Zone Pro 1.2 and the Nexus Pro. Though I would argue the Dart Zone Pro 1.2 was definitely a lot more refined than this blaster since it's actually using metal parts rather than plastic parts that should be made of metal. This blaster, I don't recommend really modding unless you really need to. So with all that said, what do I personally think of this blaster? Unfortunately, this is a blaster that looks all sunshine and rainbows on the 
surface, but there's a lot of problems hiding underneath that pretty looking shell. And as such, I don't recommend anybody take a look at this blaster at all. Even if you want to use it as a project blaster, there are a lot better options out there that won't run you back $55. That's a lot of money to spend on a project blaster when you could argue that the Zuru Longshot costs half the price and gives you just as much potential for upgrades as this one does. Even though the plastic quality on that one is made like crap, this one isn't made much better on the parts that really matter. With all that said, if you do want to get a striker, I will link it in the description below. Thank you for watching. Bye!